My name is Stacy Porter. I'm a PhD student here at Bird Polar working on my degree in atmospheric sciences and I work with Ellen Mosley Thompson in the Ice Core Group. I've always been interested in paleoclimate research ever since I began studying atmospheric sciences. At Bird Polar, there's such a diversity of paleoclimate work being done here. Um, I was most drawn to the ice core group because, in my mind, ice cores have more of an atmospheric component since it's basically a record of precipitation. And then from that, you can get so much more data, proxy data, from, from the ice cores. The ice core group here at Bird Polar collects and analyzes ice cores from around the world. Ice cores are gathered from polar regions and high elevation uh, mountain ranges. These are areas where the temperatures rarely get above freezing, so the annual snowfall can continue to accumulate and create these large ice sheets and ice caps. And these ice sheets are basically chronological layers of snow as new snow falls on top of old snow and gets compacted further down as you go. So the oldest ice in the ice cores is usually at the bottom of the core. And we drill these ice cores down through the ice sheet and we can reveal a record of all of these annual precipitation events. I'm mainly using ice cores to study teleconnections. And teleconnections, uh, the most famous one is probably El Nino. El Nino is basically ocean temperature anomalies in the tropical Pacific. But we see connections from these ocean anomalies all across the globe. The main teleconnection that I'm working on is the North Atlantic Oscillation. The North Atlantic Oscillation basically dictates the strength and location of the Atlantic storm track. Given the influence of the NAO on Greenland, especially Western Greenland, we have three ice cores from that region which should hold uh, a good record of the North Atlantic Oscillation throughout time based on accumulation and temperature. Unfortunately, the influence of the NAO on Greenland, it fluctuates through time. It's not always as strong as we would expect. And we believe this is due to some of the interactive effects from Pacific teleconnections influencing um, the North Atlantic Oscillation and thereby influencing its strength over the climate of Greenland. In order to predict what this system will do, it's crucial to know what its past behavior has been like. And hopefully we can use these ice cores to understand the past behavior. The NAO has a large influence on the climate of the eastern U.S. If we just look at the past few winters, um, the winters of 2010 and 2011 were extremely cold and snowy for most of the eastern seaboard. This was due to a negative NAO. The NAO shifted to a positive phase and around 2011. And so the following winter in 2012 was considerably warmer, um, record-breaking warmth. The thing that I will take away from working at Bird Polar is certainly the people. Um, fellow graduate students that I've gotten to know as they move on in their careers. I'm excited to see where they will go and hopefully have these connections later in life down the road. Um, working with Lonnie and Ellen has been amazing 